Lee Scratch Perry is widely acknowledged as one of the most important creative figures of the late 20th century. His contribution to popular music is immeasurable. During a multifaceted career that lasted over 60 years, the producer and performing artist did more than just change the shape of reggae many times over. Through his limitless experimentation, Lee Perry indelibly changed the way we think about sound and how music can be recorded, restructured and repurposed. Lee Scratch Perry was also a man with a complex life story. A devout Rastafarian who evolved an alternative belief system that had its own cosmology. Perry claimed of being born on Jupiter, once said that he was born in the sky and often stated Africa as his true birthplace. His earthbound arrival actually came in a remote and particularly neglected part of Jamaica, the rural town of Kendall. On the 20th of March 1936, Rainford Hugh Perry was born, nicknamed Lieber, shortened to Lee. When his father left for home, Perry's mother struggled to provide for the children, scraping and living harvesting sugarcane. With the family crammed into one tiny room and food in short supply, life was hard. After dropping out of school, Lee Perry was just another country boy coming of age during the Great Depression. So when the opportunity arose, Perry bluffed his way into a bulldozing job. While throwing stones, Perry was inspired to travel to Kingston and pursue a career in music. When the stones clash, I hear the thunder clash, and I hear lightning flash, and I hear words. These words send me to Kingston, to Kingston. Arriving in 1961, Perry started recording for Duke Reed, but after his lyrics were allegedly given to Stranger Cole without permission, Perry moved to rival Clement Dodd's Downbeat Studio, soon to become the premier recording facility Studio One. Over the next five years, he wrote hits for artists such as Delroy Wilson and brought in acts like Toots and the Mate House. He also recorded as a vocalist himself on tracks like Chicken Scratch, the first of many signature tunes. Becoming Dodd's right-hand man, but frustrated by a lack of credit for his work, Perry quit in 1966, recording Give Me Justice for Sir JJ in parting protest. What followed was a short-lived partnership with Prince Buster yielding impressive collaborations. A brief period with West Indies Records Limited produced influential work and a partnership with upcoming producer Joe Gibbs resulting in many releases including Perry's second signature tune, I Am The Upsetter. Following similar disputes with Gibbs, Perry left blasting him with People Funny Boy in 1968, a landmark of epic proportions and his first significant hit as a singer and record producer. It was popular for nine months straight in the Jamaican charts, selling 60,000 copies. A UK release made it a favourite among a new generation of working class youths that would ultimately help propel reggae into the national pop charts. It's a matter of ongoing debate whether People Funny Boy is the first reggae record. In any case, it saw Perry finally arriving as a fully-fledged independent record producer with his own upset label. Return of Django became the first 7-inch single released on Trojan's Upsetter imprint. The record reached the UK Top 10, prompting Perry and his Upsetters band to tour the UK. During 1970 and 1971, Perry worked closely with Bob Marley and the Wailers, Concurrently, Perry was breaking Dave Barker, scoring top 10 hits like Shocks of Mighty. Becoming increasingly frustrated at being reliant on the facilities of others, Perry built a studio in his back garden. And by 1974, the Black Ark became operational. Initially installed with substandard equipment, it took time for the Black Ark to become established. The moment arrived with the Susan Cadigan hit, Hurt So Good, allowing Perry to upgrade his studio. But new equipment completely transformed the Black Ark sound, beginning with Max Romeo's single, War in a Babylon. At the height of the Black Ark's roots reggae heyday, Heavy also recorded some of his greatest spiritual records with the Congos. Other highlights included Chase the Devil, with Perry's excessive alter, Disco Devil, memorably sampled in 1992 on the Prodigy's Out of Space but arguably one of the finest recording from his hugely creative period was Junior Delgado's Son of Slaves, giving voice to the lowly status bestowed on African descendants in Jamaica. 
a menacing presence was forming at the Black Ark. Internal conflicts led to him ejecting everyone from the studio, closing the doors and covering everything in cryptic graffiti. This era saw the emergence of Lee's new persona, Pipecock Jackson. With everything unraveling and equipment faulty, Perry was producing very little work. The Black Ark would eventually burn in a mysterious fire, which Perry claimed he started deliberately, feeling the studio had been polluted by negative energy. After the studio's destruction, Perry spent much of the mid-80s in London, then moved to Switzerland. When he rediscovered Torben, especially after a successful collaboration with the Beastie Boys, Perry shifted focus to singing again and only co-produced on certain collaborations like protégés Adrian Sherwood and Mad Professor. Perry's unexpected passing came at the age of 85 in August 2021. His death leaves a unique void. Nevertheless, the work he created in Jamaica has stood the test of time and his influence is clearer and more relevant than ever, with so many attesting to Perry's genius. Rest in peace to a legend, the world's greatest reggae producer, Lee Scratch Perry. King Scratch, musical masterpieces from the Upsetter archive is out now on 2LP, 2CD, digital and impressive multi-format box set. A true anthology of Lee Scratch Perry's career.